People's Democratic Party has described the President Muhammadu Buhari's Independence Day broadcast as an insult on the psyche of Nigerians and a mockery of the nation's democracy. The PDP, in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary Kola Ologmondion, said the speech was completely unpresidential, lacking in patriotic stance and replete with manifest inconsistencies, contradictions, paradoxes and false performance claims. The PDP said Buhari, in his recorded address, failed to address the key issues of freedom social justice, constitutional order, separation of powers, rule of law, human rights, credible elections, national cohesion, accountability and transparency in government. The PDP further laments that due to the incompetence and legitimacy challenges confronted the Buhari presidency, the nation is losing her voice in due regard in the international arena as the administration has remained lacking in the required capacity and boldness to forcefully engage other world leaders on critical issues. And joining us in the studio to take a look at the presidential speech is uh, Bolahon Olojide. Good to be here. Thank you for coming. Uh, so I'm sure you, you watched, you listened, and you read through the, the speech. Now, Indeed. my first question would be, what's your impression of uh, the national uh, the, uh, speech by the president yesterday? Um, you know, everything is within a context. Mm -hmm. The speech on itself was a beautiful speech, in my opinion. Um, but some of the context, uh, some of the content, when you put it in the context of the reality of Nigeria today, mm -hmm. um, they don't stack up. And that doesn't leave much hope. Mm -hmm. So it, it now sounds as if it's just a routine thing. Uh, the president was expected to make a speech on October 1st. And he did. It was a beautiful speech, and he made it. Mm. But beyond that, it, it, the, the, the beauty of it would have been if it, if it left an impact on the mind of the people so that they can be hopeful and they can see the light. After hearing the speech, what I heard were things I know and I've heard before, mm. and I wasn't inspired. Oh, wow. Okay, so that brings me to the second question, which is, as you heard in, from the news that the PDP says it's a mockery, the speech is a mockery of our nation. Do you really think it's as bad, the speech is as bad as being Like portrayed? I said, the speech on itself mm. is beautiful. That's not the problem. Then I also would not like to take it from the perspective of a PDP, because even when you go to their most advanced democracies, mm -hmm. when uh, Republicans are saying, no, you cannot talk to the government, you can talk to the Ukraine president, the Democrats say, no way, that is a crime, you cannot do that. Those are political banters. Mm -hmm. But we can come home and look at the specifics and then talk about the specific of that speech. The, the speech still spoke about the pillars of the administration, mm -hmm. anti-corruption, it spoke about the economy, spoke about uh, security, security. And, and, and a few other things, including uh, hate speech and mm -hmm. free speech cyber thing and cyber crimes and, mm -hmm. all, and all of that. So he actually touched on, on, on a number of contemporary issues. Okay. You know. So now I'll ask you, how far has Nigeria been treading in the path of achieving the dream of you know, our founding fathers? From the way things are, I don't think we have done anything significant um, in the, the right direction mm. to achieve the dreams of these founding fathers. If you look at electricity, for example, I think President Shagari was the first one that started talking about 3,000 megawatts of electricity. Mm. He left that position 36 years ago. Oh. So 36 years after, we are still in that neighborhood of that 3,000 megawatt that we are talking about then. So what has changed? That is the question. So obviously, things are not moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We were even wealthier years back than we are today. So um, we need to do some things that are more fundamental mm -hmm. than the routine. What we're doing today is, as the problem comes, we try to solve it. So it's routine. Mm. We can't make any significant difference so with why, routine. Why do, you think, why, why do you think it's taking such a long time to be able to achieve you know, some of these uh, precedents, the precedents that our founding fathers have laid before us in terms of achievements and progress? Yes. I, I, I believe, number one, leadership had been a key problem for mm. us. No vision. If, I'm a, if, if, if I come into a position of leadership, I should have specific visions as to where I think I want to take this country or whatever is the role that I, I have a leadership over. And how exactly do I intend to achieve that? Here, 
performance management is horrible. Mm. People are not held responsible. They don't even feel responsible for what they themselves promise to deliver. And the people don't also ask. Mm. Right, the people don't uh, also ask. So it's it's a two-way thing. It's a two-way thing. You, okay. the, 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 the follower deserves the leader they get. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so this takes me to one quest, personal question, so yeah. to speak. Nigeria is 51 and a day today. How would you describe the Nigeria of your dream? The Nigerian of my dream would be that which translates from the potentials we have always talked about for 40, 50 years mm -hmm. into manifestation. Today, those potential are still there. So whatever we need to do to take us from potential, potential, potential to yeah. here we are, that is what we need to do. So I see a Nigeria that is prosperous, that is truly mm -hmm. the giant of Africa that we can be proud of. Okay, so what do you think will be the priorities of this administration, you know, in terms of ensuring that Nigeria becomes a true federation, even at 59 and counting? We should revisit the foundations. Mm. There are things that are not working and, they're not, and they won't work unless we revisit that foundation. Let me give you an information. Um, there are states in Nigeria today that they rely on Abuja for up to 93% of their revenue, mm -hmm. 93 percent. So it, it means they generate only 7 percent of what they spend. So as a, as a leader, I can say, all I need to do is get 7 percent. After all, there is free 93 percent that will come from somewhere. After all. When we have a structure like that, there's an incentive for laziness. In fact, I can decide to be leaving my brains at home when I'm going to work as a leader in, in, in the sub-national government in Nigeria because it doesn't require any thinking. Mm, almost an endorsement of uh, laziness, That's so it. to speak. So we must revisit that foundation and see how we can use it as an incentive to drive performance from all segments mm. and all sub-nationals that, that, that constitute this nation. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Olojide, for joining us and sharing your thoughts there.